Well, hello Internet and welcome to part 30 of my Java video tutorial series. And in this tutorial, because you guys have asked for it, I'm going to show you how to do pretty much everything with Swing Components and create this extremely convoluted looking layout that you see here and show you a whole bunch of ways of interacting with all these components and how to push them all together in a neat little package. So let's just get right into it. So I brought in all my different libraries that I'm going to need here, and these are all very common libraries. Of course, Java Auth's going to handle some of your odd components. Swing's going to handle the rest of them. This Java Swing event here is going to handle event handling. This calendar here is going to be used so that I can have a date spinner, and then this date library right here is also going to be used so I can get today's date. And of course, we're going to extend JFrame. We're always going to do that whenever you're using Swing. And then here I created a J label, J text field, J combo box, J spinner, J slider, J radio button, a button group that's going to surround the radio button so that you can only select one at a time, a J checkbox, don't need a button group for that because we're going to be able to select multiple ones of those, and then a J text area that's also going to have a scroll bar. So pretty much everything's going to be crammed into this guy, so let's get down into it. And right here is where I'm creating my frame and saying to put it in the center of the screen. Here's where I'm handling all the close events. Here's where I have a title. Here's where I'm creating the J panel that is going to go inside of the frame. And then here's where I'm going to be adding the panel. But inside of here, I need to start putting some components inside of this guy. Now, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to take the panel and I'm going to set the layout as a grid bag layout. The superstar of layout tools here, outside of Spring, of course, which we're going to get to in later, later tutorials. So there I set that up. Well, now what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to take my label, which I defined above, name label, is equal to new. And then you just type in J label. And then I got to define exactly what type of text that I want to show up inside of there. And that's exactly what I want to put there. And then I'm going to need to add the component. But what I decided to do is add the component using a method. That way I'll be able to have everything be more tightly controlled. So let's just leave this here for now. And let's come down here and create that method. And you can see here I already went ahead and created this listener, which we're going to talk about here in a second. Okay, so scroll way down here. And I want to create a method here. And I'm going to call it uh, private void, which means it's not going to return anything. Add comp. Sounds like a good name for a component. And then I'm going to need the J panel passed so that I'll be able to add things to it. I'm also going to need the component that I want to add to the grid bag layout. And I'm just going to call it comp int. I'm going to have the X position passed over. I'm also going to have the Y position passed over. Component width. And then I'm also going to have component height passed over. And then if you would want to pass over the anchor, that's an int as well. And you're going to see what all these things are if you don't remember from the last tutorial. And then also we're going to pass over the fill, which is going to determine how this item is going to be stretched or this component is going to be stretched. So there's all that stuff. So now what am I going to need to do? Well, I'm going to need to define my grid bag constraints. Now I could go ahead and type all this out, but why do that? Instead, I'm going to jump over to the previous tutorial, part 29, and I'm just going to copy all this stuff because this is stuff that I'm going to need to use. So let's just grab it and we'll paste it inside of there. And I do this constantly. It's building up libraries that allows you to really easily just copy some of your old code and reuse it over and over again. Except I'm going to have to make a couple different changes here. For grid X, I'm going to make this, this guy right here, X position. And then here we're going to make this guy Y position. And then grid width, I'm going to call that component width, which was also going to be passed here. I'm going to copy that because I love to copy and paste. And then we're going to put in height inside of here. And for these guys, I've decided I don't really want them to do anything. Remember from the last tutorial, weight X and weight Y, it sort of helps you kind of define exactly how your component's going to lay out. I decided just to leave those as 100, which means they're not going to have much influence. And then down here for anchor, we scroll way down here. Remember anchor here is place and then fill's going to be stretch. Remember they're integers when they're passed. Even though they have these big giant long names, whenever they are passed to a method, they're considered integers. So what am I going to do here? Go inside of there. And I'm going to change that to place, which was passed. And I'm going to change this to stretch. So it's going to allow me to really easily make a lot of changes to components using just one method call, which is going to be nice. And then at the end here, I need to go the panel and I need to go add. And I'm going to say I want to add my component and I want to use the grid constraints that I defined above. And there you are. So now everything's going to be all in one area and of course make that a capital P. All right. So now I'm going to be able to call this guy called add comp and then pass all that information over and it's going to be really nice. So let's scroll back up to where we were, which is right here. And let's add the label component. So what are we going to do? We're going to go add comp 
and then I'm going to say the panel, and you better believe I'm going to be copying and pasting this a lot. Then I need to say, okay, what component do I want to send over? Well, the name label, that's what I just created. X position, I'm going to leave it at zero, since it's going to be in the upper left-hand corner. Y position, zero again. One is going to be the X width, and one is going to be the Y width. And then we have grid, bag, constraints, and I'm going to say that I want it to be positioned in the east or to the left, and then grid bag constraints again. I need to define if it's going to be stretched or not, and I'm going to say none in that situation, which means that I'm going to really be positioning these guys in here really nicely. Don't want to have a lot of changes. And then because I know I'm going to need this guy, I'm going to copy it. So most of these components aren't going to change that much. So now, after I got that set in there, I'm going to create a text field. And it's called name text is equal to new J text field. And I want it to be 30 in width. And there you go. Now what I'm going to do, paste this big giant thing inside of here. However, I want it to be positioned to the west or to butt up to this guy. See, this guy's going to be east, which means it's going to be forced to the right. The label's going to be forced to the right. And then I want the actual text box to be forced over to the left side of the screen. This is going to be called name text. And then I'm just going to have its width be X position to just change that. And that's all I need to do. And let's say I want them to enter their street as well. Well, I'm going to create a new street label. Label, J label, and then I'm going to give it a name and then paste our guy back inside of here again. And then guess what? This is going to stay east just like that. That's going to be stay the same. However, I want this to show up underneath of the name label. So I'm going to change its Y position to one, not Y. I'm going to leave everything else the same there, except I'm going to change this to street label, which is its name. And that's done. So then what do I need to do? Well, I'm going to need to create another text field. And this is going to be called street text is equal to new J text field and I'm going to make it 30 in width again. Paste this inside of here. This is going to allow me to change that. I'm going to change this to west. This guy right here is going to change to one because it's going to be in the same position again. And then I'm also going to make this two component widths or columns wide. And then of course don't forget to change this to street text. Let's make sure I got, yes, name label, name label, name text, name text, street label, street label, street text, street text. Great. Everything's lining up. All right, so now I want to create some radio buttons like I showed you in that interface in the beginning. Now, for a radio button, I'm going to put those into a box layout. I'm going to call it sex box. This is male or female. And I'm going to say box dot. And then I want to create a vertical box because I want everything to show up vertically, one under the other. Male, and I'm going to say male radio is equal to new J radio button, give it a name of male. And then we're also going to have female radio is equal to new J radio button. And of course, this is going to be female. Well, then what do I want to do? Well, I want to have with a radio button that they can only select one of these items at a time. So that means I need to group them. I'm going to scroll up here real quick. Button group, sex group. Okay, so it's already been defined above, so I don't have to come down here and define it again. So we're just going to go sex group. Just so you understand, this is done so that only male or female can be selected. Can't select more than one. There you are. And then I need to add the radio buttons to this grouping. And you just do that with the add guy right here. And we're just going to say male, radio, and female, radio. So now those are added to that group. Now you need to go in and actually add these guys to the sex box, which is going to hold the radio buttons. Remember, this grouping is just so that only one can be selected at a time. It has nothing to do with how they're displayed on the screen. Female radio. And then I want to add a border around this guy. And when I want to do that, I'm going to add the border to the sex box dot. And I'm going to set border. And I'm going to say that I want to give it a titled border. And I want the title for this to be sex. Let's throw a semicolon at the end there. And then what do I need to do? My add comp again. So for this guy, I want this to be butted up next to the text box like you saw at the beginning of this tutorial. So I just have to define it as west. Sex box is what I'm going to be adding to it. And I'm, since I want it to be to the right of the labels as well as the text fields, I'm going to move it over three X positions. And I'm going to define that it's two in width. And that's all I need to do to add the radio button. Okay, so now we have the label, the text field, and this radio button that is inside of this box over here. Well, now what we're going to do is create a flow layout that's going to contain this combo box, this spinner, and the slider that you see here on the screen. And how I'm going to do that is to throw that into a flow layout. So let's open this up, jump back inside of here, and then right after we created our radio box, we're going to go J panel. And I'm just calling this state panel. I don't know, because state is the first thing in it. And I'm going to go that. And then we're going to define that it is a flow layout. Set layout. 
You can see I'm using multiple different types of layouts inside of this one grid bag layout. And I'm going to say that I want it to float to the left. You can also do center or right. And I want 10 pixels between all the different components horizontally and zero pixels vertically. All right, so we got that all defined. Let's scroll this up. So now I'm going to define my label equal J label, and I'm just going to call it state. Of course, make sure that's uppercase. And now I'm going to add the label to my new panel called state panel. There you go. Well, I want to create my combo box. So I'm going to create a ray string, call it states is equal to, and then I'm going to load it with some abbreviations here. Doesn't matter, just using these as examples. And then I need to load my combo box, which is called state list. Uh, first, I have to create it, J combo box. And then I'm going to say that I want the array of strings called states to be loaded into it. State panel. I think you can see here how you eventually will be able to just create this right out of your head after practice. So there you are, just loaded in the combo box as well. Date label is equal to new J label. And I'm going to say appointment date for that. And then just go state panel which is my flow layout, and add the label to it. Say, real easy, roll that up. Then I wanna go and get today's date equal to new. And to do that, we just call the date method. There we go, got that. Then I'm gonna create myself a date spinner, and I'm gonna set the default for today, and I'm gonna give it no minimum or maximum. New, J, spinner. And all the code for this is all available underneath the video. Date model. I'm going to go today's date. That's going to be its default value. And I'm just going to say null, null, which means it's not going to have a minimum value, nor is it going to have a maximum. I'm going to go calendar, day, of, month. And what that means is it's going to increment by days each time somebody clicks on the spinner. That's what that means. And you could also, of course, have year in here instead of day of month, put year, or you could also put month, also in uppercase letters. And then we have to use the date editor, which is just an editor that's gonna make it real easy for you to display and edit the dates. And do, 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 J spinner dot date editor, date editor is equal to new. Instead of typing this out again, I'm gonna call this guy here like that. And here I'm just going to define date spin, which is my little spinner I got there. And I'm gonna define how I want things to show up. So I'm gonna say day, month, year. And then that's going to handle everything else for me there. So that's going to be nice. Uh, I just have, need to come in here and go date spin dot set editor. So it knows what to work with. And then date editor. And I just need to go state panel and add date spin. And that's going to put my spinner inside of that flow layout. Then I'm going to create myself another age label. I'm going to say new J label. And I'm going to type in age and I'm going to give it a default value of 50. We're going to be changing out here in a second. State panel dot add age label. Because I said I'm going to cover pretty much everything, I'm going to create a slider is equal to the new J slider. Give it a minimum value of one, maximum value of 99, and an initial value of 50. Then I want to change the value of the label every time the slider is changed. So I need to go listen for slider. L for slider. What I'm going to call this and go new listen for slider. And that method will be called every single time someone interacts with the slider. And then I'm going to go age. I need to add this listener to my slider and just go L for slider like that. You're going to do that the same every single time. And then of course, state panel add age slider. And of course, you're going to need listen for slider. You're going to need to define that, which I already did. And all this is doing is saying, hey, if anybody interacts with the slider, we want you to come up here and we want you to execute whatever is in this method. So we need to come down here. It's right here. Listen for slider implements change listener. We went over all this before. Right here, the event's going to be called. Here it's going to say, was the slider interacted with? If so, we want age label, which we just created. We want to set new text inside of it. And that text is going to be age followed by whatever the value is currently for the slider that you just created. And then now that we have all those different components set up inside of that flow layout, well, we need to take the flow layout and throw it onto the screen. And how are we going to do that? We're going to get this guy up here, add comp, select it, and we're going to copy it again Come down here. All right, so what do we need to change here? Now I'm going to change this to east, still have this as none, and then I'm going to say I want my position x to be 1, which means 1 in, so that we draw a little bit more emphasis to the name labels and all that stuff. Want it to be 2 down from where it was before, and why is that? Let's go up here to this guy, see here? 
three, and then this is at zero. And then if we scroll up a little bit longer, you're gonna see that this is at one. So this is the last text field we entered. So this is in the Y position. Well, this guy's in zero because we want it to float to the right of those text fields. So what are we gonna do down here? We're gonna make this two. That's where that's coming from. And we want this a five in width because there's a lot of components there, and one in height because that's what works out for it. Now we're gonna create some check boxes and that's really easy to do. I'm just gonna go J check box. And I want them to be able to check whether they prefer morning, afternoon, or evening. Correct to those. And then we're gonna throw those in a box. Layout again. Remember, I'm just on purpose trying to use as many layouts as possible, really. And this is gonna be create vertical box, just like flow layout and grid bag layout and grid layout. So is a box a layout. And I'm gonna create my checkbox here. And this is gonna be called morning. This is afternoon. And there is evening. So now what do I need to do? Well, I need to throw all these guys into the box that we created, this guy, option box. So option box dot add morning check, afternoon check, and evening check. Okay, they have all been thrown into the box. And then we need to create the little border factory. Let's come up here and just grab that. And you can see that's here. And let's just grab all this. So I'm using the same guy that I used for my radio buttons. Save myself some time, paste that in there. And then this is gonna be changed to option box. And then this is going to be changed to time of day. And this guy we're going to set to 1. Of course, don't forget to change this to option. This is going to be 1 because we want it to be 1 in from the left side of the screen. It's going to be 3 down because the last component we put on the screen was 2 down. We're going to let this 2 width and 1 height be the same. I want this to butt up to the top and also to the left side of the screen. So what am I going to do? I'm going to call this northwest. That's exactly what it does. And leave everything else the same. And then finally, we have our text area. And I called it about you. I'm going to say equal to new J text area. And I want it to be 6 in height and 40 in length. And I want to set some default text for it. Tell us about you. But I'm not done with this text area yet. I want to make sure that if the text doesn't fit on a line, I want it to jump to the next line and then continue putting things out. Set line wrap to true. But if you don't remember from the previous tutorials, you have to also define that you want your words to stay intact. And you just come in here and go set wrap style to make sure your, your words all stay intact. And we're gonna make this be true as well. And just to continue adding everything, we're gonna add scroll bars. And it just goes J scroll pane. J scroll bar one is the name of it. I'm gonna go new J scroll pane. And I wanna add those to about you the JText area that we just created. And then I need to define how they're going to be displayed. And I'm gonna say that I always want scroll bars that are vertical, just vertical scroll bars always. And then I'm gonna copy this. I have to type all that out again, paste. And then I need to define if I want to have horizontal ones. And I'm gonna say horizontal scroll bar as needed. And then of course you could also have vertical or horizontal scroll bars always or vertical or horizontal scroll bar never. Also all in uppercase letters. And just close that off. Oh and of course this is J scroll pane not panel. Sorry about that. So then we created that. I'm going to need to go to the add comp again. Get this guy. Paste this inside of here. And this guy I want it to be butted up to the right side of the screen. So I'm going to change it to east. I'm going to leave this as none. Scroll bar one is what I'm going to be adding to this guy. I'm going to be adding it to the panel, of course, just like before. And then I want it two from the left side of the screen for the X position. I'm going to leave this three. I want it to be three in width and I want it to be one in height. And everything else there is exactly the same. This is where we're going to be adding the panel to the frame. What Pack does is it's going to adjust the frame size to best work with all of my components. And then Set Visible, of course, is going to make my frame show up. And if I execute that, here it is. There's all the information, everything laid out here on the screen. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.